you may have noticed that I am an Italian. I mean, sure, I don't sound like an Italian, but if you look at my name, which is about to appear under my face. And having grown up around many Italians, I can confirm that generally they don't make a lot of sense. I mean, sure, we're good at some things, food, football, organized crime, and cars. We're pretty good at cars. Look at this thing. It is achingly pretty. Like Monica Bellucci with wheels. In fact, that's what they should have called it. The Maserati Monica. But instead they called it the Ghibli, which sounds like something you'd order from Nando's. This is Maserati's first attempt at an executive saloon of this size. It's designed to take on cars like the BMW 5 and 6 Series Grand Coupe, Audi's A7 and the Mercedes E and CLS class, all of which cost quite a bit less than this giblet. For the S model, which I'm currently driving, you'll need to part with 1.8 million of your hard-earned rands, which means that you could buy a more powerful Audi S7 Sportback and still have change for an Audi S3. Don't get me wrong though, it is quite special in here. The leather work is beautiful. There's more of a sense of occasion than you'd get in say an Audi. But there are some issues. The infotainment system, that's borrowed from Chrysler from five years ago. And I don't mind it being a bit clunky and a bit old, but the reverse camera looks like it's been stolen from an old Blackberry. And there aren't even little luxuries like heated seats, something I've experienced in cars like Volkswagen Polos. And then we get to the Ghibli's real Achilles heel. These sporty, beautiful lines come at a bit of a cost. The rear legroom, well, there just isn't much. And then this is the S model, the most expensive, most powerful Ghibli you can buy. But the only way people can tell that is because the brake calipers are red. There isn't even an S badge. And so on the face of it, this car doesn't make much sense. But I was kind of expecting that. And then, just when you're ready to write it off as the butt of future jokes, you flick it into sports mode. And the Italian fires back. <laughs> beautiful bonnet is a 3-litre twin-turbocharged V6 with similar power and torque to the BMW M3, 301 kilowatts, 550 newton meters. But somehow it's just different. It hasn't been designed to just convert petrol into thrust and noise, although it does that rather well. No, it's been designed for more than that. It's been designed to get under your skin, to confuse and delight your senses. How do they do that? This car hates being a sedan, hates being a saloon. It wants to be a sports car. And it gets even better when you put it in manual mode and start controlling this eight-speed ZF box, flicking up through the gears, fourth, Fifth. And on the downshift, wow, then you get that blip of the throttle and you can hear all six cylinders munching their way through your wallet. And all the petrol you've just put in your tank. But um, all the sportingness has got me averaging 
20.2 to the 100. Yeah, 20 litres per 100 kilometres, which isn't very good. So the car has three driving modes, sports, which is lovely, normal, and then something called ice, or increased control and efficiency mode. Now that is the most optimistic thing I've ever heard an Italian say. Sure, the M5 is an amazing car, the E63, the Audi S7, but very few of them make me want to drive like this does. But you can feel its Italianness coming through. I'm not even sure what that is, but I can feel it, I promise. It's easy to dismiss the Ghibli as just an oddly named shrunken Quattroporte. It's built on the same platform, it shares an engine, but it's shorter and sharper in the metal. It looks more purposeful. Overall, I actually think it's a better package. Like many Italians I know, they're difficult to appreciate when you first meet them. But the more you get to know them, the more you realize that there's a lot of character there, there's a lot of charisma. And I feel like the Italians know that when they build cars. They don't strive for perfection in the same way that maybe the Germans do. They strive for something better, for beauty, for character. They strive for charisma. That's what people remember you for. And that's what makes this Ghibli very interesting indeed. It's perfectly imperfect. I really like it.